So today we're going to be looking at an old film camera that my dad gave me, and it is a Kodak Duoflex 2. My dad actually used to shoot with this camera back in the day, but for as long as I can remember, it was always just sitting on a shelf above the TV. But when I started getting more into film, he decided to give it to me. Now for months, I just had it on display in my room, and then randomly my dad just asked about it, and I'm like, well, it's just sitting over there on my bookshelf, what about it? And then he asked if I've ever used it, and the whole time I'm thinking, I've had this thing just sitting on a shelf. For months and it's worked the whole time and he never told me because he just assumed that I knew. But long story short, I was only mad at him for like a day after that so it was all fine. These were produced between 1947 and 1950 in the US and 1949 through 1955 in the UK and there are many different versions of this camera. I have the US one with a fixed 75mm Kodak lens with an f-stop of 15. It has a waist level viewfinder, which I am used to, but for some reason with this camera, it was just a lot more difficult to line up my shots than with other waist level viewfinders that I've encountered. So a quick little overview of the camera. On the right here, you have your shutter button. Just press that. And then you also have your advanced film knob. You just turn this up and the film will be advancing. And then you just wanna keep an eye on the little red circle here to know when you get to your next frame. You also have the option to do long exposures. So this little switch here in this eye, so that's regular, just 60 second shutter speeds. Then to do a long exposure, you just pull it down right into B, and then now you can do a longer exposure. So this top lens here is the one that you're looking through. Um, don't really know why this bottom one is here. Obviously there are different variations of this camera, but the one that I have, this bottom lens is basically useless and kind of just there to make the camera look cool. And then for the viewfinder, you just lift this little tab up right here and then look right through it. And for this particular viewfinder, if you're not looking at your subject um, straight on, then this thing is practically useless. And for the MSIs, it's a 6x6 negative and you get 12 shots per roll. So it takes 620 film, which they don't really make a whole lot anymore. But luckily 620 is just 120 film on a smaller spool. So to modify a roll of 120 to fit in this camera, you have to cut around the edges and then sand down the top and bottom of the roll until it fits in the camera. And it only really takes about five to 10 minutes to do. So I actually missed the first shot on this roll because the numbers on the back here, I thought they were displayed vertical instead of horizontal. So the one really just looked like a line to me. So instead of getting 12 shots on this roll, I'm only getting 11. The first roll I shot on this, I was shooting in harsh sunlight and I had a hard time not missing the numbers as they went by, so I did end up missing a couple frames. I also did not turn the dial far enough, so two of my images are overlapping as well as a double exposure, 
so you can actually get really creative with this camera if you want to. It's also not that great at focusing because you don't have control over it. Um, it's a very soft and shallow focus and kind of the only thing it says in the instructions is that your subject can't be closer than five feet, which isn't really helpful at all. So kind of what I had to do in post-production was kind of add a little clarity to it and it kind of made my images more sharper and not as soft to focus. Now the images you get out of this thing aren't going to be amazing because you don't get control over anything. There is no manual shutter speed, aperture, or focus, so it's basically just a medium format point and shoot camera. But with that being said, you still do get this old and aesthetically pleasing film look. You just have to deal with a lot of trial and error with this camera. Also, the further I get into this role, it's becoming harder and harder to advance the film, probably because I didn't do that good of a job of sanding down the film to make sure it fits um, better because it is pretty snug right now. Luckily, I only have two shots left. Um, hopefully, I will be able to pull it off because um, I didn't have like tweezers or pliers or anything, so if this gets stuck, I'm kind of screwed. I'm also shooting in black and white, which is something I just don't do. I usually shoot in color and then like if I think the color is distracting or I just don't like the way it looks in color, I'll turn it into black and white. So shooting just in black and white is definitely a different thing for me. shot here hopefully we're gonna get this thing turned Let's see when you get to the Kodak part that's when it starts getting really hard to turn come on you stupid little thing oh I really like I really just like I really just can't turn it oh almost got it here we go and Oh, there we go. Got it to 12. That was not as easy as it should be. But when I took my roll of film to get developed, they told me they do actually sell 620 film, which I was surprised by. So if you don't want to have to modify a roll of 120, you do have other options as well. So overall, I think this could be a good introduction camera to medium format or 6x6 negatives because it does take away all the distractions like did I change my shutter speed or shit, I actually forgot to focus, which we've all unfortunately done at some point. But yeah, I would really only recommend this camera as a learning tool because by taking away all the settings, the only thing you can focus on is composition. And at the end of the day, composition is kind of the most important part of a photo. But hey, what do I know? I'm still just surprised that this camera actually works and that my dad kept it for me for so long. Listen to the sound the shutter makes. Like, that's such a weak sound. Now, that's the sound of a real shutter.